Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel Tech Audio. My name is Bharat Kumar. So in this video, I'm going to talk about loops in Python, like for loop and while loop. I request you to give me support by clicking the subscribe button. So now let's get into the video. Welcome to the course. It is part two point seven in this Python series. So in previous video, I talked about if else condition statements. I'll leave a link in the i box. So kindly go and check it out if you didn't watch. So now let's begin with the agenda. So firstly, we'll have a look at for loop, and then we have while loop. After that, I will teach you nested for loop and while loop, and then we end up the lecture with the logical question, right? So in the end, I'm going to give you assignments. So kindly do the assignment and get perfect in this loops concepts. So first up, we have Python for loops. It is a definition, and then we have flowchart. Before starting with the for loops. I want to give you a scenario where we can actually use the for loops and then after we'll have a look at the definition and the flowchart, right? So I want to print hello world for five times. It is printing four times. I want it for five times. You can see I'm printing hello world for five times, right? It is a bit tough to print hello one for five times. So for this problem, I have a for loop concept. So have a look at for loops for i in range up to five. Here colon and then print hello one. You can see it is printing for five times. And then I'm giving this I variable here. Hello world printing zero, one, two, three, four. Right. The total is five. So in order to solve these problems, we have this concept for loop. Generally, for loops make our work very easy. So now let's have a look at the definition. So now let's have a look at the definition. A for loop is used for iterating over a sequence that is either a list. A tuple, a dictionary, a set, or a string, right? This is less like the for keyword in other programming languages, and works more like an iterator method as found in other object-oriented programming languages. With for loop, we can execute a set of statements, once for each item in a list or tuple or set. Here you can see that I'm starting a for loop. Here we have to give the iterating variable, and then in sequence, like it is list, tuple, set, dictionary, etc. So now, item from the sequence. If I have item of values 0 to 5, so first it will go to the 0 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to the 5. First item in the sequence and then next item. If no more, item is present in the sequence and then in the loop. So the item starts from the 0 and then up to the 5 because I have the values 0 to the 5. After the 5, there is no item present in the sequence. So then in the loop. Hello, just have a look at the range function because we need to use range function in for loop, right? So, generally, so first we have to look at the syntax. The syntax has three parameters start, stop, and then step. So, first here we have to give the start number and then stop number and then step. Step means skipping the Numbers. Now let me give you the follow syntax. Here we have to give a for keyword and then here iterating variable and then in is a operator where we can use in operator in only the for loops sequence, right? And we have to give a column here and then take four spaces and start writing your code. We have an example for i in range starts from starts from 1 and in 10 in a 10 and then skip two rows and give the column and print i you can see it is printing from the 1 to the 9 and it is skipping two numbers it is skipping two right 
So here I want to give one. You can see it is printing up to the nine only because in the for loop it is a stop number, right? When it comes to the ten, it will stop the loop. It won't print the ten, but I want ten also, and then give eleven. Yeah. Here you can see it is giving ten. Now I want to change this step to the three. So now I want to print a three table here. So first start with the zero and then thirty. You can see it is printing three table. Or else you can do here start with the three, stop at stop it thirty one and then step three. You can see here three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty one, twenty four, twenty seven, thirty. Entire three table, right? I want to give you a visualization where we can see that how the for loop is working. This is the website where we can see the code visualization for the for loop. I will give this link in the description below. So kindly go and check it out. So now, first, first you have to copy the this code and then paste here and now click on this button. Visualize execution. So it has. 21 steps you can see that here so now click on the next so first we are at the step one click on the next yeah it will go to the step two so it is the step one step two is this print function and now click on this so so for the first function we have no objects and no frames it is the first line first step when i click on this next it will come to the it will come to the this print function it is the step two and then here you can see that so for this print we have the value i equal to three and then print next yeah it is coming to the so it is printing three and then it come back to the for loop step three and click the next yeah. it came to the print function and then the i value is six so now so now i want to print this six yeah it is printing six and it is get back to the for loop so for the same we have the nine and nine printing and go back to the for loop and then 12 12 printing 15 15 printing 18 21 24 27 30 it is a 20 step and then when i click on the 21st step it will go to the for loop and then it will check that so the stop is 31 it will stop up to the only 30 so here you can see done running the 21 steps yeah. it is a tool where we can see how our program will work right now we'll see next and for loops so first of all go to this click the markdown and then press the hash button hash for the single header hash for the header one and now tab here nested for loops because it is a markdown it is a markdown in the Jupyter notebook where we can see the text, but we can't do the code, right? So now, so first click on this, it is giving markdown. Now click on this and set this option to the code. Now we can do the coding, right? Now I want to create nested for loops. Nested means a loop in another loop, right? Now I want to create for i in range up to 0 to 5 and then a condition with the four white spaces and then i now create one more for loop for j in range 0 to 3 now i want to print i comma j just a second here i want to give a colon no, no. it is it is printing this i belongs to this for loop so what is the range of this i 0 to 5 and then range of j 0 to 3 means it will, it will print up to print up to 2 only because i have given 3 and then it prints up to four 
from 0 to the 4 here from 0 to the 2 now you can see that so first i have this for loop with the value of i and then go to this second for loop with the value of 0 you can see that it is printing 0 comma 0 and then the i value becomes the same 0 so first of all i want to complete this loop right and then j go to the 1 0 1 and then j go to the 2 0 2 so now the end is 3 now this loop will end it has to go to the first for loop i and then 0 after we have 1 1 printed 3 times because we are printing 3 times in the j right so now i want to give you a clear clarity on this nested loops by visualizing it so now you can see now i want to visualize the code yeah you can see that now we are in the step one it is the step one the red color arrow indicates the present step now go to the step two in the step two for the i i have zero and then and then j also i have zero so now print step four it is printing i zero j zero and then it will stay in the inner loop only because it has to complete and then pi j is one print i is zero but j is one and now step seven j is two print j so now this loop is completed with this zero and then go to the now you can see i is one and j is zero one zero one 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 two so up to so up to 41 steps it is completed done running why i am executing this code in this visualization means because i want you to understand the code how the code is performing with this visualization you can see that what is the code is doing in the python right with this tool you can do it for the python javascript c c++ and java right now we have for and else right so first i want to execute this code for i in range 6 it will print 6 numbers so for i in range 6 and then print i so now come out of this loop and write here else statement print finally done now now you can see it is printing up to the 5 because the stop is at the 6 so it will print up to the 5 only from 0 to the 5 and then after completing this loop it will execute this statement right so now if you want to understand this code clearly just copy this code and then paste here and try to visualize this code right it has 40 steps and now check for the each step what is doing right now we'll see looping through the string so first i have to create a string where equal to python for loops right now for i in here i have to give the sequence or the range so now i'm giving a sequence where now you can see print i here you can see it is printing all the character and the and the space also right it is printing right with the same example i want to create another example so in this i want to give some conditions where equal to equal to p and then now print p is encounter in the string i want to give another if statement like l if if where equal to equal to l print L is encounter. Or else, 
nothing. I want to print nothing. After the execution of our loop, I want to give one else statement. Looping through the string is completed. Sorry, it is not the where, it is the i. Because here I am using i. i equal to equal. You can see that first in the for loop, first I have p. So it encountered p, p is encountered, and then nothing is encountered. It will print up to this space, nothing is encountered. And then you can see l is encountered in this string. And nothing, nothing, p is encountered in this string because we have two p's, p and the p, and then nothing. So after this, nothing. The for loop is executed and then after the for loop i want to execute this else statement looping through the string is completed so now you want to understand how this program is working just copy this program and then paste it. it has 65 steps and now go through the each step and understand what is the code is doing right so up to here your for loop is completed here I started with the simple code and then I started making it a bit complex. You can see. So for this program, I make it a bit complex than previous programs because I want you to learn. So if you found any complex for loops or while loops or if else statements, just go to this website and copy here and try to understand the code. Now we have the while loop. With the while loop, we can execute a set of statements as long as a condition is true. Here you can see that first I'm starting the while loop and the condition. If the condition is true, the statements inside the loop will execute up to the condition is false. If the condition is false, and then it will come outside the loop. Right? So first you have to initialize a variable i equal to give some value and then write the keyword while i less than 6. And then print i. So here, I have given a initialization and then it is a condition I have given i less than 6 and then print this. So now let us execute this program. You can see it is printing this many number of this many numbers. It is printing zeros only. It is printing only zeros. If it is continuing like this, your Jupyter notebook will crash. So now I want to restart this kernel. Restart. So now I want to give here a condition i plus equal to 1. So here i is not incrementing. So that's why it is printing zeros. But here I started incrementing i value plus 1 when it which is to the 6, it will stop executing the while loop. Now you can see, this started with the 0 and then it is ended with the 5. Right? 5 less than 6, it is true. So now, if you want clear understanding of this while loop, copy the code and come here. Paste it. It has 20 steps. First, initializing the variable i, i0, while step 3 is print i. It is printing i0 and then increment the i value, i plus 1. You can see i value is incremented and then it comes to the while loop. 1 less than 6, it is true. Now enter into the while loop, print i, i is printing 1 and then i value incremented 2 and then. So you can see when i equals to 6, 6 less than 6, it is false, right? So it will directly come out of the, it will directly come out of this loop. It will print up to the 5 only, done running code. Now 
now else with while else print run running while loop yeah. you can see right so now i want to use while loop with the if else conditions first initialize the variable i equal to 0 and then while i less than 30 I want to increment this i in the starting one. I, I want to increment with the 3. If i equal to equal to nine print it is nine. And if i equal to equal to 27 now i want to print it is 27 else print all the i values and then i want to give one more else after the executing while loop print done running done running for the i i have 0 and then n up to the 30 so first i start incrementing with the plus 3 so it is 3 because this is not true and this is not true so now else is executing because i not equal to the 9 and i not equal to the 27 so what is the i value 3 so now it has to print 3 and then 6 when my i becomes 9 it is saying it is 9 and then 12 18 21 24 when i becomes 27 it is saying it is 27 and then 30 then running while loop so what is your job means copy this code go here edit this code remove this code and paste here and now visualize the code it has 52 steps so now click on each step and understand and try to understand what is the code is doing right so now let's solve a logical question i want you to print this two table with the for loops right so take a pause here and try to solve this question i want to print two table for i in range 2 to up to 21 print i you can see it is printing two table but i want in this manner so now i want to change this values from 2 to 11 so i just want to make some changes in the for loop so what is the change first give the two and then one comma this x character and then i equal i into 2 now you can see it is printing but here i miss the 1 so i want to give here 1 now you can see it is printing two table if you want to understand this program then copy go to here edit remove this code paste visualize the code is simple for the print i want to print x is a symbol for i how many values i have for the i up to the 10 it will print up to the 10 from the 1 to the 10 2 into 1 2 2 into 2 4 2 into 3 6 and then like that yeah. so in the beginning i said that i'm going to give you assignments so this is the website where you can practice all the assignments it contains 70 plus questions i want you to solve as much as questions you want to solve because if you solve these questions you will get some confidence in these concepts right it contains seven tests so try to solve as many questions you solve if you didn't understand this code then copy and paste here and try to visualize the code and try to implement some logic so what is the beauty of this assignment means you can find the question here and the answer also here only right 
So guys, I'm requesting you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me some support.